Hello and welcome to this DDI What's New CADcast. My name is Cody Armstrong, and the topic is SOLIDWORKS Costing Part 2. So when we left off, we were discussing adding template comments to drill, mill, and turn tools in SOLIDWORKS Costing in 2014. I want to move on to the next one, and that is organization of the setup folder. And what you'll notice in 2014 costing is when you run costing using a machining template, and that's an important distinction, this only applies to machining templates. When you go to the setup, you're going to see separate subfolders organizing the setup. So you'll see load and unload setup subfolder, an or operation setup subfolder, as well as a custom setup subfolder. And these are really just tying into the info that I punched in the template I was showing you earlier. So the load unload time, the setup time, all that stuff is really just tying into this and it's just allowing it uh, a more organized layout than in previous versions. So obviously operation setup time is going to tie into the operation setup costs uh, that you have in your template. The load and unload time is going to be tied to the load and unload time you have in your template. And then custom setup is things like painting and anodization and packaging and so on. So those are some examples of different custom setup costs. But what you're going to notice in the 2014 release is this separate subfolder hierarchy uh, just organizing the different setup folders for costing in 2014. So let's move on. So setting the model materials is one enhancement uh, that just simplifies the process of specifying a material when you're defining costing. And what you notice, one of the first things you're going to see with the 2014 release uh, with regards to material is this new button that says Set Material. And basically the way this works is you specify a certain class and name of material. In my case, it's steel, plain carbon steel. And when I hit Set Material, it'll actually apply that material to the part itself. And what I mean by apply the material is literally if you look at the materials, you'll see plain carbon steel has been applied to the part. So there's a way for me to apply materials from costing. Also new for the 2014 release is if you apply material that's in the template in SOLIDWORKS. In other words, if I apply a SOLIDWORKS material and it's mapped to something in the costing template, it'll automatically recognize the material. What I mean by that, if I just quickly call up the template editor here, when I go to materials, you'll see SOLIDWORKS material and custom material. So if I specify 6061 alloy as my SOLIDWORKS material for the part, it will automatically map to the custom material in costing. So it just saves me that additional step, but that's an enhancement for 2014. So there's kind of a bi-directional link now to the material, whether you specify it in costing or you specify it in the model, it should be better about recognizing it. So that's setting model material for 2014. Let's move on to the next one, and that is simplifying cost estimates. So of course the way costing works in previous versions is it bases it on specific features. In other words, it recognizes a hole and then assigns a drill operation to it or recognizes a pocket and, and assigns an end mill operation to it. But of course those are very dependent on the type of tool you're using, the feeds and speeds associated with it, so there's a lot more info that needs to be punched in in order for it to be really accurate. The idea behind simplifying cost estimates is it allows me to um, generate a cost without necessarily knowing every feature or every step of the manufacturing process. So it's kind of a simplified approach to generating a cost. Now the way this works is from the costing options, so the costing options here, you'll see an option use customizable volume feature recognition. And what this does is instead of looking at it from a feature by feature basis, it takes the stock model takes the finished part, subtracts the volume of material removed, and then calculates a cost based on that. So it's not looking at a specific manufacturing process, not looking at an end mill or a drill or so on. It's looking at the entire volume of material removed and giving you one flat rate according to that. Now you can base it on a couple different things. So I can base it on a default machining operation, I say everything's done with a flat end mill, or I can do it on a cost per volume removed. And this is useful if I do a lot of roughing and then finishing operations uh, because then I can specify different costs for those different rates. Uh, so if I know those values, I can punch those in and it gives me a little bit more detail. But the big thing here is you're defining by the volume that is to be removed and not individual operations um, in, in, in the costing setup. And that's really the big difference. It's a much more simplified approach, of course, because I don't have to punch in feeds and speeds and tool diameters and all that. I don't have to know all that information. Um, so it's a very simple approach to generating um, costing information.
So that's the simplified costing options, this new volume features, right? This option right here is primarily a use customizable volume feature recognition. It's just a different way of recognizing um, geometry that's going to be machined. And this really does apply to machining templates. It also does not apply to sheet metal parts that are using machining templates. So this is only for machined parts and machining templates. So jumping back. So the next one on my list is updating the template cost material data. And in the previous versions of SOLIDWORKS costing, you really were forced to use the template editor to do everything. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the template editor. And when I go to stock material, in previous versions, inputting here was really the only options that I had. So when I input cost data, I really only had this as an option for putting that information in. With the 2014 release, you have the export button at the very top here. And what this does is it exports that information to an Excel file. So I'm going to go ahead and export this to the desktop. And it'll load up. And what you'll notice is now I have all the material information but in an Excel form. And so now I can do all the things I'm used to in Excel. So if you're a big Excel buff and you're familiar with it, this is a much easier way, I imagine, of inputting all that data than typing it into the template editor. And the way it works is, of course, you export to an Excel file like I have done here. I'd come in and add a whole bunch of values, maybe add some cost, tweak the cost settings, add some different material types, so on, um, and then close this, save and close, obviously. And when I go back to my template editor, after I've done, exported, modified, saved it, I can update and then browse to that Excel file. So that's the whole workflow. You'd export the Excel file, make your modifications, then hit update and browse the Excel file and update your list. So it's just a cleaner way of modifying the cost associated with materials without having to do it inside of the template editor here. Moving on. So what I'm going to go over next is using multi-body parts to define removed material. And this has always been one big limitation with previous versions of costing is if you had material already removed, or for instance, maybe you were machining from a cast model, right, where you're not starting with a block or a cylinder or a plate, um, the material removal is obviously going to be very different. And so what we have now is the ability to use multi-bodied parts as a way of defining material versus part to be calculated in costing. And I want to kind of walk you through an example of how this might work. So here, here I have this part, and this is my finished design. And I want to figure out how much the machining costs are going to be associated with this. But I'm starting with a cast model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert that cast model using insert part. Now the key to this is, of course, it's multi-body. So here I have another part called stock that has a few features removed. The, just the steps as if I were getting this. This is essentially my cast model. I'll go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to place it right on top of the other. So now I have two solid bodies here in this part. Now basically the way this command works is I take the two bodies, subtract one from an, the other, and what I end up with is just the material that's going to be removed or machined away. So to do this, I add a combine command. Insert features, combine. I use subtract, and I'm, a sub I'm going to subtract the cast model right, the cast cylinder in my case, from the finished part. And if I hit OK to this, what you'll notice is I end up with just the material that's being machined away. So you'll see all these little bodies out here in space. That's just the material that's to be machined away. And the nice thing about this is with 2014, I can run costing against those bodies. And that's something that's unique. In, in previous versions, we didn't have a way of running costing on a multi-bodied part. So in this situation, really what I want to do is with volume recognition, right, just what is the volume of each one of these and then calculate a cost associated with that. Now with multi-bodied parts, it's going to look slightly different in the to uh, costing task pane. So you're going to have a main template that points to two sub-templates. And then you'll have the option of defining by body what type of body is it? Is it a machined body or is it a custom slash removed material? So if I want to run normal costing, I could select this body and just say, okay, figure out what the cost to machine that body is. But in my situation, these are actually custom removed material. 
And I can define it for all of these at once instead of going and doing them one at a time. I can hold shift, select them all, and set them all to custom slash removed material. And of course here what I've defined now is these are in fact, this these bodies are removed material and I want to figure out cost per volume. So I'm going to say, okay, it's 50 cents per cubic inch of material to be removed. And once I have all the bodies defined, you'll see an option here for begin cost estimation. And of course it runs and it figures out per part what the cost associated with each one of those bodies is. So this is a way of running costing on a multi-body part. And I think it's really a uh, applicable in scenarios like this where maybe you have a cast model and a uh, plate or cylinder or um, um, boss, a stock shape is just not going to work. And in that situation, a cast model using a physical part as your stock definition and then subtracting one from the other is an easy way of figuring out volume of, volume of material remove and then calculating cost for that volume. So that's really where I see multi-body features playing out. I think that's a, a good use case for it. Let's uh, move on to the last feature in my list, and that is volume features. So the last topic is the topic of volume features. And volume features is one big enhancement to SolidWorks costing for the 2014 release that will really make a difference for those that may not have uh, the manufacturing knowledge or the manufacturing background and may not know all the manufacturing steps that are going to take place to, to make your part. So the way this works is in the costing options, and this really only applies to machining templates, machining parts, but in the costing options, you're going to see an option here, and I've already briefly mentioned this, the Use Customizable Volume Feature Recognition option. Now the standard process for costing in, in previous versions was f uh, manufacturing process based. In other words, this is a drilled hole, this is a milled pocket. Whereas the customizable volume feature recognition takes the volume of material to be removed and uses that as a calculation for your, for your cost. And so it's a little bit easier for those that do not have things like feed rates and chip loads and surface footage and, and don't know what operations are going to take place to make this part. As I just want to know, okay, how much material is to be removed? and then get a, a general idea of cost based on that. So it's a little bit different concept, but it's very easy to set up, very easy to use. Now you have a couple different options when you switch to customizable volume feature recognition. One of them is how do you want to define slots? You can define slot features or you can define slots as volume features. Also, how do you want it to calculate the cost for those volume features? The default is choosing a specific operation, end mill, drill, so on, and it'll just use the um, calculations for that tool to figure out your cost. But you can also override basically all template settings here with cost per volume removed. And it allows me to define roughing, semi-finishing, and finishing operations cost per cubic millimeter in this case. And then it'll use that as the calculation to figure out final cost um, based on the volume. So you have a little bit more control. You can go in and define these settings and ignore the template entirely for calculating cost, or you can define it per an operation based on the template. But these are volume recognition options. So what you'll notice, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to this. I have it set now to volume feature recognition. You'll see on the left-hand side I have a series. This is you know set up, and I have some turn operations, some hole operations. Initially, I did this with the manufacturing process recognition. Now that I've set it to volume recognition, what you'll notice as soon as I hit OK, it says, okay, do you want to change the costing information? I said yes. It's going to go through and refresh this based on the volume feature recognition. And the difference with this is what you'll notice on the left-hand side is all those turn operations are now defined as mill operations. And what happens when you define as volume is it doesn't know whether or not that's a milling volume or a lathe volume. So it just defaults to mill operations. But what you'll notice is all the different volumes defined here. Now if I wanted to, I can change it to a turn operation. I can right click, convert to turn. That's one way to convert it to a turn operation. You have the same thing, convert to drill. So I could make that into a drill operation or define that as a drill operation. So you can combine volume and specific manufacturing process operations, but you have to define it that way. Also kind of neat is if I go in here, I'm going to add a custom setup operation. I'm going to add a setup operation to this is I can drag a volume from one setup operation to another. So if I have a volume for instance and one op that's going to be one side and another op is going to be another side, you'll have to drag the volume from one setup to another. 
it is a little bit more manual, but you got to remember with a volume recognition, it's not going to know which side of the part uh, the setup is on. And so in these situations, you'll have to go through and define which volumes belong to which setups. Um, but of course, the nice thing about that is it'll automatically add the setup cost, it'll automatically add the load and unload time. Um, so those are neat features of it as well. Also, what you can do with the volumes is you can right click, insert into new part. This will actually save it as a separate part file, but just that volume. So it allows you to look at specific volumes by just that part file, just that, that associated volume itself. So it gives you a little bit more um, flexibility if I'm trying to understand, you know, maybe um, the amount of cubic inches or whatever it is of a, a specific volume, I can export it that as a single part. So those are some of the volume features for SOLIDWORKS costing in 2014 release. And that does it for part two of this CADcast. For other CADcasts, visit us at www.youtube.com forward slash ddicad or www.ddicad.com forward slash techcenter. Thank you. Mm -hmm.